the 2022 Mercedes AMG GLE 53. Now SUVs should not be coupes and I will die on that hill, but an AMG badge, a twin turbo straight six, and quad exhaust tips might just make up for that. Mercedes pretty clearly put tech and luxury first in this car. You can tell as soon as you open the door and take a look inside or if you take one look at the options sheet, but it still has an AMG badge. It's still a coupe with that sloping roof. So you have certain expectations of performance and you want it to drive well. Plus, you know, a $78,000 price tag with this one optioned almost up to a hundred. You do have certain expectations. So this one does have an inline six. It has a twin turbo inline six that makes 384 pound feet of torque, 429 horsepower. It can get moving in 5.3 seconds, zero to 60 time. And that's pretty good for something that weighs 5,000 pounds. The best part about the powertrain is the fact that it's a mild hybrid, which is not a full on hybrid. Doesn't mean you're using an electric motor half the time. And while it does help a little bit with efficiency, you're still at 19 city, 21 highway, not exactly great, but it gives you pretty much instant throttle response. And that's no matter what driving mode you're in. And a lot of cars that'll kind of modulate your throttle depending on what mode you're in. So if you're an Eco, it's not going to get you off the line real quickly because it's trying to save gas. Well, because you have a small electric motor, you're saving gas anyway. So even in Eco mode, you can get that throttle response right up the line and you can really get it moving. And that power goes through an all wheel drive system that is fully variable. Mercedes says you can send up to 100 pounds to the front or rear axle, which is pretty impressive and we have a nine speed speed shift transmission uh, with paddle shifters here it's pretty responsive the upshifts are nice and quick the downshifts could be a little bit quicker but they are still pretty quick or if you don't want to shift for yourself you can always just adjust your mode because we have comfort we have sport we have sport plus we have eco and we have an individual mode set up where you can set your steering you can set your throttle you can set a bunch of different options throughout here you can set whether you want it to be manual or automatic and this one actually has the steering wheel option with these extra buttons down here we've got a knob to change your mode nice quick easy access rather than having to go through here and you have a button for your suspension and another button to change whether you want manual or automatic mode so those are very convenient and i definitely recommend that option if you plan to be switching your modes around a lot this one also has the optional suede steering wheel with the flat sides this is not your standard steering wheel and while i was a little bit weirded out by that to begin with i have grown accustomed to it and i actually kind of like it i do like having the flat sides here since you should be at nine and three anyway and it's got the nice spot for your thumbs it is a very comfortable driving position this one also has the heads-up display option. That's about an $1,100 option. The heads-up display has a lot of options to it. You can customize it like with everything in this car. If I went through all the customizations you can do in this car, it would take me an hour. And I'd probably miss a lot. Actually having this car for a week, I probably have missed a lot of the customizations you can do in here. But I do think that the HUD is a little bit too big. I wish it were a little bit smaller. And the flashing speed sign kind of gets annoying after a little while. Every time you hit the speed limit, it'll flash at you and tell you you're going over the speed limit for a couple of times, and then it'll calm itself down. But that's pretty nitpicky. And you can turn the HUD off if you don't like it, but might as well just not option it. And that's just my personal preference. But we do have lots of other cool stuff in here. You can set up your display however you want. You are a hundred different ways you can set that up. A hundred different ways you can set up this and you can even set up predefined themes. Now other than the heads up display being right there, out the front you do have pretty good visibility. Out the sides you have very good visibility. Out the back visibility is not awesome because it is a coupe so you kind of have this semi-circle roof thing going on which really eats into that back window. Oh we have rear cross traffic alert we have blind spot monitoring we have all the standard safety stuff this one actually has an advanced uh, driver safety 
Plus package, which does a lot of things like emergency stopping and uh, collision avoidance. It even has a feature where it will Basically, it's like semi-autonomous driving uh, where it'll keep your speed for you and then when you hit the turn signal, it'll look for a safe spot to pass and it'll actually pass for you. And it has adaptive cruise that works really well. It's actually pretty aggressive uh, if you set it on that shortest setting. As far as cornering goes, the roll is real in this one and maybe I'm just a little bit spoiled from that F-Pace SVR that I was in last week. Uh, but. It does roll quite a bit. They do say that because of that 100% varial all-wheel drive system, you can actually get from slight understeer to slight oversteer. I'm a little bit afraid to try to throw this thing into a corner too hard just because it does roll quite a bit. But this one does not have the active body control package, which is something that you can get, which will help with some of the balance. It actually is uh, an electronic system that can adjust your suspension at each individual wheel and kind of control you through a corner a little bit better but this one does not have that and it leans quite a bit in the corners well, that's all right I mean this is an SUV it's not exactly what this is made for and it does straight line speed pretty darn well for an SUV plus the fact that it's an AMG and it's got a big engine you probably want it to sound good, and it does. It's got that quad exhaust system. It's got quite a few pops and burbles that sound really nice and throaty. Big fan of the way it sounds. Now, I mentioned that mild hybrid system before. There's one thing that a lot of people find intrusive. It's the auto start stop features. Since I'm here at a light, engine shut off. But since we do have that mild hybrid, you can kind of barely even notice. Yes, it's very quiet, but as soon as you get going, that electric motor kicks in and it's very very seamless so you don't have to have to wait for that kind of spark up and go and there's no delay in your response you really have it right away now, of course I mentioned that it is still tech and comfort and luxury first and these seats are very comfortable this one has the optional rapid heating there is a standard heated seat but this one has optional rapid heating so you get your butt hot even faster and this one also has the ventilated seat option of course all your controls are on the door because it's a Mercedes and they like to do things a little bit differently but you have memory seats as well this is also the optional $4,500 upgraded interior with the Napa leather and it is very comfortable it's also got the optional massage seats again at that price point you expect it to be comfortable you have multiple different ways of massaging yourself here or having the car massage you all very nice at this price point we're looking at seventy-eight thousand dollars to start this one's optioned all the way up to a hundred grand which is quite a bit of money and you do expect performance and you do expect luxury at that price point i think when you have something with an amg badge and a mercedes badge the interior we have fully adjustable heated and ventilated massaging seats with controls on the door an infotainment screen that stretches across two-thirds of the dash to combine with the gauge cluster ambient lighting with your pick of 64 different colors features and customizations that would take a month to go through the future is now brought to you by mercedes mb tech synthetic leather is standard but this one is optioned with forty five hundred dollars worth of brown and black napa leather the heated seats are standard too but rapid heating seats for the fronts along with heated armrests and door panels add in the massaging seats for another eleven hundred dollars whether you're road tripping or sitting in stop and go traffic it sure is comfy in here $500 adds the Napa leather performance steering wheel, another $400 for the performance controls here to adjust your suspension setup drive mode and choose whether you want to shift for yourself or not. The square steering wheel is a new one for me, but it's definitely grown on me for a comfortable 9 and 3 driving position. The buttons on the wheel will take a bit of getting used to with a mix of scroll wheels, physical buttons, haptic pads that function like mouse pads on a laptop. Notably absent from here is the ability to disable lean keep assist, but it otherwise does have the essentials and then some. The 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster can be customized to your heart's desire, from full on airplane cockpit to minimalist and driver focused. 
The optional 1100 heads up display above the gauge cluster is the biggest of any I've seen and I feel it has way too much going on. Luckily that's customizable as well. Tack, speed, sign recognition, pitch of the car, it's all available to add or remove. I just wish the speed limit wouldn't flash at you every time you hit the speed. As for the infotainment, we have another 12.3 inch display, super smooth and very clear. The UI takes a little bit of getting used to, but they've packed a ton of stuff in here and you can set up presets if maybe you and your spouse have different preferences. You don't have to change everything every time you get in the car, but your massage seats, your ambient lighting, your nav, your driving modes all live in here and you can choose your own adventure. If you want to use the touch screen, this touch pad down by the armrest or the touch mouse dealy on the steering wheel or even voice control. And there's an option optional add-on that's supposed to respond to hand gestures and even try to guess what you're going for as you reach the screen over the optional heated and cooled cup holders. And Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard as well as wireless charging and we're listening to our music through the optional 25 speaker Burmeester 3D sound system. 38 inches of legroom leaves plenty of space in the back for adults as well as decent space for rear facing or front facing child seats. These are heated as well and we have 23.5 cubic feet of space behind. The space is deep but the roof line does eat into the space quite a bit. The regular GLE SUV gets an extra 10 cubic feet. The roof line also means I've bumped my head a number of times getting in and I am not a tall guy at 5 foot 7. From the outside this look has not grown on me at all but I do love this emerald green metallic color and it's only $750 as opposed to the $4,500 paint job on the F-Pace I was in. The coupe does get us a slightly shorter wheelbase than the full-on SUV at 115.6 inches. We're in 21s here. 22s are an option but the 21s will give you the better ride and in this car they're the ones to go for. Auto folding mirrors with integrated turn signals and blind spot monitoring, a nice big pano sunroof. The front end here has a big old Merc badge and LED headlights and DRLs and auto high beams as well. The visibility at night is great. LEDs in the tails too, along with silver AMG and GLE badges, leading to a power lift gate opened by key or hands-free. And of course, we're finished off with the quad exhaust tips.